Sea Monkey and Aqua Dragon kits both come with a pouch of dried food to feed your little aquatic pets. But what happens if the food runs out? Today we're going to look at 5 alternative feeding options for brine shrimp, including one you probably already have in your kitchen. In their natural environment, brine shrimp are non-selective filter feeders, meaning they passively consume small food particles suspended in the water column. This is usually microscopic infusoria like bacteria and microalgae. Microalgae, which is also known as phytoplankton or cyanobacteria, are small single-celled organisms that form the base of the marine food chain. They're usually green, and just like plants, they consume carbon dioxide from the environment and expel oxygen as a byproduct of their metabolism. Something important to keep in mind is that this algae that brine shrimp eat is alive, and these living organisms provide essential nutrients as well as several other health benefits for brine shrimp. Now when it comes to raising aquatic pets in your home, generally speaking, replicating their natural environment is always a good thing for their well-being. And because live algae is the food source for brine shrimp in nature, it will always be, by far, the best food to feed them. But there are dried options they can eat too. The food which comes with sea monkey and aqua dragon kits is usually a dried form of algae. And while this algae is no longer alive, it's still a great source of nutrients for your brine shrimp which is why they work so well for raising them. Fortunately, dried algae powders are relatively cheap and easy to find at health food stores or to buy online. The first alternative food source I'll talk about today is spirulina powder. Spirulina is the name of a freshwater algae species, and in its dried form, it's usually a dark green color. This is a great food to feed your itemia. Just make sure to only give them a tiny amount at a time. Since dried algae is no longer alive, the powdered granules decompose very quickly when left uneaten in an aquarium, promoting the growth of harmful bacteria, which can spoil your water quality and wipe out your entire colony in the blink of an eye. This is why I always recommend feeding only a very small amount, which your brine shrimp can clear in a few hours. Now while regular spirulina is green, you might have also heard that there's a blue variety too. Many people in this community have theorized that perhaps feeding blue spirulina powder to your brine shrimp could turn their bodies blue, so you bet I tried it out. Now, blue spirulina isn't actually some unique species. It's actually just an extract of green spirulina where a bunch of the phytonutrients have been removed. And after experimenting with it, it doesn't appear to be a viable option. It dyes the water blue, but the shrimp themselves don't appear to be able to consume it. So this one's a bit of a dud. The next food on our list is chlorella powder. Honestly, this is very similar to spirulina. It's a green microalgae powder, and you use it in the exact same way as spirulina. Something I should mention about these two dried foods is that they're not water soluble, meaning they don't dissolve in water. The downside of this is that the food usually sits at the water surface, or falls to the bottom of the tank, neither of which is particularly ideal for brine shrimp to eat, especially those smaller babies, which are pretty useless swimmers. One option here is to mix the powder with water first and then pour it into the tank to make the food a little more accessible. The next food option on our list is the third dried algae powder, although this one is a little different from the other two I mentioned. It's called Hematococcus pluvialis. I know that name sounds a bit complex, but all you need to know is that this algae species produces a bright red carotenoid called astaxanthin when it's stressed out. The idea of making algae stressed is kind of funny, but it basically just means exposing it to too much light or heating it up too much. Anyway, it just so happens that this astaxanthin they produce is the most powerful antioxidant known to man, and so humans like to consume it as a dietary supplement. Now, I have no idea about how effective consuming antioxidants actually are in reducing oxidative stress on the human body, but what I do know is that my brine shrimp love eating this shit. What makes it different from spirulina and chlorella is not only its color, but also the fact that it's soluble in water. Astaxanthin powder completely dissolves, making it easy for your smaller brine shrimp to access and eat. It also tints the water and your pets an orangey red color. Again, feed sparingly and give them no more than what can be cleared in a few hours. I should also note that not all astaxanthin is the same. I get mine from a seller on eBay, who I'll link in the video description. They make a really good quality product, so I suggest buying from them for the best results. And just for transparency, I don't have any affiliation with the seller, all I know is that their stuff works. The fourth food on our list isn't spoken about too often in this hobby, but I've had good results with it. Egg yolk. Yep, just raw egg yolk. The preparation here is important though, so watch closely. Firstly, you need to separate the yolk from the egg white. 
tipping it back and forth between the two halves of your egg shell usually does the trick. You can just discard the egg white during this process if you want, or fry it up if you fancy some extra protein. Next you put your egg yolk into a small cup or ramekin, and then simply mix it with a little water. Make sure to stir really well here. The exact consistency and ratio of yolk to water isn't too important. You kind of just want to end up with a gloopy yellow liquid. Then you just use a small pipette to put one or two drops of the mixture into your tank. It looks kind of cool as it slowly falls and gets mixed up in here too. I probably wouldn't recommend using this method long term, but it does the job of feeding them if you're in a bit of a pinch. And for the fifth and final food option I'll talk about today, I really have saved the most important till last, and it's the one that I mentioned at the start of this video. Live microalgae. Guys, I cannot stress this enough, and I'm going to keep repeating it every chance I get. Live algae is by far the best food you can feed your brine shrimp, and above all else, its presence in your tank is the single most important element for the long-term success of your colony. In fact, if you're having any problems with your sea monkeys or aqua dragons, it can most likely be solved by feeding them live algae. Live algae is what Itemia eat in their natural environment, and because it's alive, it doesn't decompose and spoil your water quality. In fact, it does the exact opposite. It helps to break down waste and remove toxins while simultaneously producing life-sustaining oxygen. I grow this stuff in a bottle on my windowsill, and then put it into the fridge where it can be stored for a few months for later use. To feed my brine shrimp the algae, I simply remove around 10-20% to of the water from their tank, and then fill it back up with this nice green algae. This essentially does a small water change, while also feeding them at the same time. So, how do we grow live algae? Well, I made a video all about that which you can go watch here, so go check that one out next.